In this interview, I'm going to be talking to uh, AERMEC Technical Director Dominic Barbaro about commercial heat pumps. And uh, this is a technology that has become economic in the last, you know, four or five years, 10 years, and is spreading across Europe and Asia, not so much in North America yet. So I wanted to talk to him about how they work and what the applications are. So welcome to the interview, Dominic. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, as I was mentioning off camera, the reason we're big fans of heat pumps is we installed one in our house uh, three years ago. And it seems like the, you know, this is a typical clean tech. It costs more to purchase, but it costs much more to, uh, or much less to operate. And then it brings all sorts of other benefits, you know, like we get heat and air from the same uh, system and it's very comfortable. And, and it, we just, we're, we're huge fans of the technology in our house. And I imagine that the exact same benefits are what attracts uh, businesses to buying commercial heat pumps. That's exactly it, actually. We see uh, a lot of uh, trends moving towards the heat pumps because of the efficiency, also the, the footprint that it takes. So you have less equipment um, to maintain throughout the year. Um, you have uh, the energy costs, obviously, are much lower. Um, it's true that the, the initial costs are uh, higher to integrate because it is a, a more sophisticated piece of equipment than your regular fossil-fueled uh, gas furnace or, or, or um, other equipment that you may need in your system. But it does bring a, a lot of um, uh, special applications that you are able to tweak and, and you know, set up for your entire either commercial or industrial application where we are able to have different zones. We're able to uh, prepare the or set the heat or cooling temperatures specifically to different areas and also recover some of that heat. So it makes it much more efficient. You're not just wasting um, or you're not wasting the heat that you see in your, uh, that you typically see in traditional applications. Uh, that leads me to a question that came out of an interview I did uh, a couple of weeks ago about the integration of uh, AI into HVAC systems. And it would seem like, uh, and they were talking about exactly the same kind of thing, you know, you can customize the HVAC so that you cool some rooms, uh, don't cool other rooms, on and on, lots of benefits to it. And it seems like uh, an HVAC, uh, sorry, a heat pump uh, would work perfectly in that kind of a system. Well, that traditionally, yes. I mean, we can actually, it, it integrates into a more, into a larger system. So a building management system, uh, it is one part of the puzzle. It doesn't do all these things. However, it allows you to uh, move in that direction. So with the building management systems or the integrated um uh, IoT uh, devices that they have, you are able to uh, pr practically set up your system to have several different settings, several, several different functions throughout the day, throughout the year, uh, all depending what the needs are, whether it's occupied spaces, unoccupied spaces, not wasting that energy, where in traditional systems, it's an on-off type of device and you're either on or you're off. Um, my understanding is that the that Asia and Europe are far more advanced than North America in adopting uh, commercial heat heat pumps. Why is that? I think it's a it's a question of energy costs that they are currently seeing in uh, let's say Europe, for example. So energy costs are much higher traditionally. Um, they do rely a lot on fossil fuels for heating. Um, so there's there's a push towards something that's more sustainable, um, also greener. Um, it, the footprints are also smaller. So real estate in Europe is sort of limited. So you are looking for smaller devices, smaller pieces of equipment that do a multitude of things. So you are able to heat and cool. You don't need two separate uh, units. Um, and it's a, it's a, the initiative was also started sooner as well. Traditionally, uh, what we've seen in North America are lower energy costs. Um, we do rely on fossil fuels and it's been re readily available locally. So it, it is easier for us to get our hands on that and actually generate uh, the electricity and or heat that we need to run the equipment. 
I'll provide a little context here for our viewers, uh, and I won't expect you to to comment because this gets you know, into the realm of politics. So you can leave that one to me. But you know, in Europe, uh, when Russia invaded Ukraine and cut off uh, its supply, you know, like forty percent of its natural gas, and they brought in Europe brought in the uh, RE Power EU, Repower EU, and the idea was to uh, diversify energy, electrify and uh, increase energy efficiency measures. And heat pumps fit right into that. So you can see why the, uh, the EU and, and the Great Britain, uh, you know, the UK, uh, would be promoting heat pumps in a, in a big way because it fits into that repower EU strategy. And over in Asia, uh, China is just le is leading the world in electrification, They're electrifying everything and growing their power grid by leaps and bounds. So they're promoting heat pumps in part because that's their domestic demand for heat pump manufacturing. The Chinese have been very clever. All of the electrotech, EVs, uh, batteries, whatever it is, they, they stimulate both the manufacturing side and then the demand side within their own market, and that allows them to scale up. Very smart. And so you've got those two forces in Asia and, and Europe that are working. We don't have them in North America. And so it's, I guess it's, it makes sense that we would be slower. Okay. Now, <laughs> the pol political lesson's over. Um, I, one of the things that uh, I, I find interesting is... Okay, clean tech cost or electro tech costs more to buy, less to operate. Are we now at the point where for commercial applications, total cost of ownership is now still lower than a fossil fuel alternative? So, uh, as you said, initial costs are greater than your traditional uh, you know, fossil fuel furnace. Um, but over the long run, so long term savings are actually quite significant. Right, so a, a heat pump can be three to five times more efficient than your regular fossil fuel system. So the savings that you're getting over a period of time is also it, it it sort of becomes cheaper in the long run because these are not units that last just four to five years. They last 10, 15, 20, 25 years, um, and the efficiency is maintained as long as we maintain the unit. While in uh, a fossil fuel system. Um, there's a lot of maintenance, um, there's a lot of emissions, um, and that's also something that we need to look for uh, when we're actually installing these systems. Because the, the I know we're talking costs, but there's also a, a social cost that comes to the, um, to the installation of these units. We're moving to a greener, more sustainable energy source, while we're still, at least the newer generation, views the fossil fuel system as something a little bit more dirtier that it's still, you know, it does provide heat. It, you know, it can do the job. However, we're seeing as it, you know, pollutes or it, there's emissions or so on and so forth. Um, the more we move um, towards electrification, the more technology advances so that the cheaper it becomes. Um, let's wrap up this part of the interview with this uh, observation. And that is uh, both China and Europe uh, now have, um, you know, well, in Europe, they call it the carbon border adjustment mechanism. So if you, whatever they import, uh, the, the, if you have emissions intensity built into your product, like oil, for instance, in Canada, they tax it, carbon tax. In China, they've got a national uh, uh, carbon tax that they started out in the power sector, and now they're moving it to other sectors like refining and, and processing and transportation and, and so on. So if you're in North America, for example, and you want to export to Asia or Europe in the very near, either it's they're doing it now or they will be doing it very quickly and they will be measuring the emissions intensity of your product and then applying a tax to it. So this really becomes, emissions be, intensity becomes a commercial issue, uh, sorry, a competitiveness issue. And I'm wondering the extent to which this figures into conversations you have with your clients. Well, it, it does. So the, the, the carbon footprint of, a, of the unit itself, being a self-contained unit, has very low carbon, emission, uh, uh, carbon footprint. The, the, the carbon footprint increases as per the energy that you're using, right? So depending where you are, what kind of energy source is close. So, I mean, we can have renewable ones where you'll have solar or wind, and then you'll have the more traditional ones where you're using coal, oil to, to generate your electricity. That's where the, the, it factors in. Um, you are still using a clean 
equipment or a clean unit. In other words, it doesn't generate emissions. So for sure, the client is always looking towards that. I mean, even to get them, um, and it does play into the selection. For example, if you're building or outfitting a commercial building, you're definitely going to be playing on, on, those, uh, on those strengths because the clients or the tenants that are moving into those buildings want to know that they're moving into a, uh, a building that is well-sustained or also the tenants don't want, if they are paying for energy and so on, want to know that they are, you know, as efficient or, uh, you know, are, or are saving as much as possible on those costs. Um, and I guess the, um, just to pin it down, your, the, the clients are asking for this because they understand the importance of lowering their emissions. And, and I'm wondering uh, how this has changed over the last 5, 10, 15 years. You've been in the industry for a while. Uh, what's your take on that? So actually what I was mentioning prior was the, the social impact or the social benefits. Um, the more we are educated or the younger generations, the way that we've gone through school, we've, we've learned more about pollution and carbon emissions and so on. And, and, and how I won't necessarily say that fossil fuels are a bad thing. They are a necessity. However, we've come to view them as a um, as contributing to a global warming or uh, just pollution in general. So the the clients are looking for a way of saying, well, "Hey, we're not um, contributing to this. We're using a clean energy. It's very efficient." Um, these are the things. The social push is what's actually driving this. I believe. 